Hi Taurus, welcome to your general read for October 2018. A three card major arcana reading. Then one from the swords, one from the wands, one from the pentacles and one from the cups. And then one from the wild Quan Yin oracle by Alana Fairchild. And a very beautiful oracle it is too. Right, I'll just take my headphones off. One more shuffle for you, Taurus. Hope all is well with you. And one more cut. Okay. Right, the energy as we come into the read. The Hierophant. And there you are. They do say that's you, Taurus. Okay, the block or drain. Justice in the reverse. The key to power. High Priestess. In reverse, how interesting. Three character cards. <clears throat> okay. Get it all nicely lined up. Well, I'm always intrigued to see the uh, the High Priestess in reverse in whatever position in this three card reading. As I said, the energy as we come in, the block or drain the key to power because for me the, the the high priestess in reverse in many many um many settings is uh redolent of uh narcissism <laughs> because we have all that kind of wisdom all that spiritual wisdom and mercy and compassion that is in the high priestess turned on its head and where the rules, the basic rules of nature, of human nature, of, of what creates well-being between us are turned on their head and subverted. However, in this reading, there's, there's, there's more to it because there's no way... <laughs> that all that that I've just said could ever be seen as a key to power. <laughs> um, it might be a key to control, <laughs> it might be a key to domination, but it's not a key to power. Those things are not the same. So let's have a little look at this and see what's going on. I mean, it looks to me like we're coming into this, um, you know, in, in strong in our own our own power, strong in our own um, presence. The block or drain here, justice in the reverse. I mean, justice in the reverse is always going to be draining of well-being in and of itself. However, there's a kind of accumulator effect of that negativity when something that is already negative in and of itself turns up as the block or drain. So there's something a bit more interesting going on there. And there's definitely something interesting going on here. I would say, and I will um, explain why I'm saying this, but I think one could benefit, you could benefit uh, through October, Taurus, in not doing too much sort of self, too much self-reflection um, or not doing a, a whole heap of that or not looking for self-reflection and, and um, coming into a, a place of your own spiritual, uh, your own spiritual well-being, your own spiritual structure um notions about uh compassion and forgiveness and all of that i'm not saying that those things aren't good because they are but sometimes um compassion that isn't tempered with uh with discernment can simply leave us in a weakened position and i think i've quoted this in one of the other readings uh, i can't or a reading recently the the buddhist saying that um, wis compassion without wisdom is um, foolishness. And, you, you, you know, that's pretty easy to understand. 
um, you know, you just go around sort of being all like nice and squashy with everything and everyone, and you just, you know, you're going to be uh, mugging yourself, you're going to be uh, tripping yourself up, shooting yourself in the foot, whatever. So compassion without wisdom, the compassion must be tempered with wisdom in order to not just leave us completely vulnerable and unbounded. But there's the other side of it as well, which is that wisdom without compassion is bondage. I mean, imagine if you understood everything about life, the universe and everything. Imagine if you understood all that. Imagine if you had complete enlightenment as to how life works, what it is for, what it is about, what the meaning of it is and all of that. And yet you had no compassion for anyone. You, what a terrible, terrible entity you would be. <laughs> because you'd have all that knowledge and all that understanding and no way of um, kind of ever seeing anyone's weakness or vulnerability or, or any of that. You'd just be a, a kind of spiritual fascist, really. Uh, so there's something going on here about wisdom and compassion in the High Priestess in reverse here. And uh, that, that there's a sense of injustice in the reverse here as the block or drain. That uh, the sense of things not being right, of the, the scales of justice having been upended. I mean, as I say, that, that is in and of itself draining. But I'm wondering whether there's an, an, an over um, emphasis on that. I mean, here we have uh, the, the, the Hierophant, the High Priest in the upright. The key to power is the High Priestess in the reverse. And the fulcrum, the, the bit in the middle of the scales here, the bit on which everything pivots is this sense of um, justice in the reverse. And it's this that turns spirituality the right way up in the Hierophant. Well, this is more sort of external expressions of spirituality. Um, I mean, if you notice, the High Priest, the Hierophant here, has acolytes who've come to listen to him. You know, his monks and his followers, uh, apart from this dude down here who seems more interested in something else, <laughs> uh, from, you know, um, each to their own. But this is the outward expression of it. This, the high priestess, is the inward expression of it. She's alone here. You know, she doesn't have a whole bunch of people at her feet going, oh, high priestess, you are so wise, you are so compassionate, we love you, please tell us what to do. <laughs> um, this is the self. This is the wisdom of the self. This is the wisdom of the self expressing itself in the outside world. As I say, one in the upright, one in the reverse, and the fulcrum point is justice in the reverse. So uh, there's this sense of um, injustice moving us from a place of um, kind of public stability in the self, represented in the Hierophant in the upright, to a place of private stability in the reverse, in the High Priestess in, in reverse. And yet, and yet, this is the key to power. So, I think perhaps in the context of this justice in, in, in the reverse, what, however we feel about the wrongs that have been done, and that can include wrong, wrongs done to us and wrongs done by us. And perhaps just a generalised sense of um, <laughs> justice being in the reverse, which is very, very easy to feel when we look around at the world today. Um, but the key to power here is to not withdraw into one's own spiritual space. Now, I, I don't know where that goes from there. You know, when, when, when we look at the, uh, the minor arcanas and the Kuan Yin, we might get a bit more of an idea about that. But 
<sighs> Over focusing on this um, injustice here, whatever that means to you, whether it's in the personal life or wider public life, and I do think there might be something in what I've just said there, because this is a hierophant in the upright, the, 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 the public persona of spiritual structure and moral structure and moral code. But an overemphasis on this um, and responding to um, one's sense of injustice by going within and kind of hiding in a private spiritual, it would be hiding, you know, spiritual bypassing. Hmm. Spiritual bypassing. Um, I would say spiritual bypassing is to be avoided <laughs> this month because it is so, so easy and so tempting to just sort of go, oh, my God, you know, there's so much wrong in the world and there's so much wrong in my life. I'm just going to withdraw into the little kind of monk's or nun's cell in my mind and, and just sort of exist there in a state of blissful meditation where I don't actually have anything to do with any of this. The key to power this month is to not do that, Taurus. Right, let's pull a sword. How interesting. Okay, we get the Four of Swords, which is about withdrawing into the cell and thinking. So I'm just going to... You see, there are, look, there are two elements to this. It's not just the figure that has, in essence, here turned to stone and sort of stopped engaging for you know, for a while in the spirit of this card, stopped engaging with um, with the world. And, you know, we have one sword pointing at the solar plexus, which is, uh, you know, how we show up in the world. One sword pointing at the heart, which is how we, I'm going for the chakras now, which is how we interact um, with others from a place of compassion and compassion, you know, isn't just about going, oh, you poor thing. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's fine. Don't worry. And compassion isn't just about that. Compassion is about looking at someone else's shitty behavior and deciding not to judge, deciding not to say to oneself or to others or even to them, saying, if I was in your shoes, I would be doing better than you. That is the essence of judgment. And that's what separates judgment from discernment. Discernment is simply seeing something for what it is. Judgment is when we look at someone else's behaviour and in the absence of the whole story, because one can never know the whole story of what, what it is to be this other person we are looking at. But in the absence of that, we nonetheless go ahead and we say, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't behave like they are. I would be better than them. That is the essence of judgment. And it is, you know, at best, a failure of the imagination. <laughs> at best, <laughs> that's what it is. And it's incredibly damaging and pernicious to the, to the one who judges as well to the one who is judged. And that's why all the major spiritual traditions, you know, counsel against it. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I mean, you know, in your weaker moments, would you want someone looking at you and saying, I, I'd do much better than you? Essentially, I'm better than you. I mean, God almighty, who needs that when you're having a hard time? You know, what you need is someone looking at you and saying, well, you know, you have behaved really shittily, but I don't know, perhaps if I was in your shoes, the full extent of which I do not understand, perhaps if I, if I was in your situation, I might have behaved like that too. I don't know. You know, that's suspension of judgment. Anyway, so we have a sword pointing at the solar plexus, which reminds me of what's happening here in the Hierophant, in the upright. You know, the public persona, the public expression of the inner moral code. And we have one pointing at the heart, compassion and lack of judgment, absence of judgment. And we have one pointing at the consciousness, at the, the, the uh, Anya third eyebrow chakra consciousness conscious awareness so these things are suspended above us as we sort of sleep <laughs> in a stony withdrawal and underneath it all is the fourth sword 
that is that we kind of keep with us but that we're not going to use for the time being so that's one aspect of the four of swords but we also have this incredibly bright corner here that is indicative of the world that remains outside you know there's sunlight shining through this this stained glass window um showing that you know beyond this stony cell of withdrawal is um, an infinite world of colour, form, shape, life and diversity and abundance. It's still out there, no matter how, how um, stony and, and playing dead <laughs> the sleep we sleep on this, uh, on this plinth. So this really is about um, the inner world and the outer world and the juxtaposition between them. And as I say, the fulcrum is this matter of injustice. All right, let's get one from the wands. Three of wands. OK, so again, <laughs> again, this is about the inner. The inner becoming outer, stepping out into the world to kind of put down our stakes in the world and, and begin to to put our stamp on something, to make our mark. Moving from the private space, the inner space, into the outer space. It came from outer space. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help that. Okay. Seven of Pentacles. Well, I'm going to put that down because I'm not sure what kind of work we're dealing with here, but I think we're probably dealing with spiritual work. But let me get the cups and see. OK, how lovely. Nine of Cups. OK, so th this is. This is this is what happens when you get what you want. <laughs> And I mean, it's then followed by the Ten of Cups, where having got what you want, you then manifest the joy in in having got what you want in the Nine of Cups out into the world. And you get that beautiful rainbow and the and the partner and the children and, and the happily ever after. So. Yeah. I think the message here for me is to remain active within the outer environment and to not withdraw into the inner spiritual four of swords stony cell of one's own spiritual reality and I'm not saying it's not real <laughs> it is real but it's not always a good idea to um, decide to withdraw in there because the issues of injustice with which we are dealing, as I say, whether it's um, collective, individual, whether it's injustice done or injustice meted out onto us, done by us or done to us. I don't know that I can't see. Um, oh, I can't remember where I was going with that. But the, 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 sorry, the message I'm getting here is stay in touch with the world and stay active with the world beyond your own little, beyond your own little thing. Yeah, this is what I was, this is where I was going with this. When we sort of go, oh, God, I want to run away from from this, this injustice and, I, you know, I can't handle what's going on outside of me. So I'm just going to retreat in. That is spiritual bypassing. and That's not going to get us anywhere. Um. And it's very, very easy to slip from being um, spiritually aware. And I know I'm going on about spirituality, but, you know, we do have the Hierophant. We do have the High Priestess. So this is this is what this reading is about. Um, it's very easy to slip from being spiritually active in one's own right and feeling the benefits of that into uh it's very easy to slip over the line into spiritual bypassing where you basically hide in a beautiful place of uh of peace within the self and that's what i see here in the four of swords um what these cards are telling me is three of ones keep yourself out in the world keep looking outwards 
whatever is going on with this uh, with this justice in the reverse. Look for ways in which um, your um, perhaps your own sense of injustice in your own personal life is reflected outside of you because there might be something really useful for you to learn in in kind of transposing what's happening on the personal out into what's happening in the wider public realm um, and keep busy with it keep busy keep working don't just like shrink away and um and sort of stop making efforts this is about efforts to engage with the outside world and again this is what the high priestess in reverse says the key to power is saying you can benefit greatly from continuing to keep yourself plugged in to what is around you and not simply what is within you and i mean you know nine of cups how absolutely lovely um you know th this will be to your benefit that's what this reading is telling me if you stay plugged in to the world around you don't unplug from that however horrible and unjust it may all seem don't unplug from what's from the world around you and and kind of plug yourself in in a closed circuit to the world within you you are already plugged in inside right let's get one from the wild Kuan Yin oracle Okay, that's the one I want. <laughs> Lovely. Let your world spin on its axis. Okay, so we have here this hierophant in the upright, the scales of justice with the fulcrum the, 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 the bit that attaches the two sides is on its head. So we have the public spirituality, the fulcrum, private spirituality, where the public has been turned on its head into the private space. And when I say public, I'm not, I don't mean sort of like go out and just shout, but just keep consciousness plugged into what's around you. Um, so we have an axis here. In these three major arcana cards and Kuan Yin here is telling us that that this this axis is um, okay to engage with and I mean when your world spins on its axis you know, there's no right or wrong way for it to spin it simply upends and whether it goes, whether it upends from north to south or from south to north, whether the north <laughs> goes to the east and ends up in the south or whether the north goes to the west and ends up in the south, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. You know, there's a neutrality here to this axis. You know, neither one, I mean, this could, I reckon this whole reading could have been the other way up. You know, we could have had Hierophant in the reverse here as the key to power we could have had justice in the upright and we could have had them um, the high priestess in in the upright everything could have been reversed and it would be the same it would be the same story it would be the same relationship between the outer spiritual self and the inner spiritual self and not favoring one over the other Right, I'm going to leave it there, Taurus. Um, please like, please share, please subscribe. And I'll see you again for another reading soon. All best. Have a wonderful October. Cheers. Bye-bye.